So I can now do things that I wouldn't have imagined uh, two months ago. Um, I got on my bike again this week, which is a real thrill for me. Carl Schur is on the road to recovery, but COVID-19 hit his body hard, especially his heart and lungs. The response of my immune system to the virus was extreme, and that battle was fought in my lungs. And so the appearance of my lungs is a fibrotic appearance, which would, you would normally expect to see in somebody who had severe chronic lung disease. <sighs> The other organs that have been affected for me is my heart. So I had four months of uh, cardiac arrhythmias. It was 50-50 whether it was going to live or, or die. Carl and his partner Annie both contracted the virus while on a cruise to Antarctica. He was in intensive care for two weeks. And the breathlessness is the biggest problem that's continued on uh, still today. Earlier on it was the cardiac problems as well, um, so not knowing whether he might have a stroke because his cardiac problems were quite serious. More than five months after diagnosis, Carl is feeling better each day, but it's not yet clear whether he's suffered any permanent damage. It seems that my heart is coming back to normal. But um, my lungs are still a, a major limitation for me. So that's the next phase of my rehab. And I possibly won't know for another six to 12 months whether my lungs will actually recover fully or not. It's not just the respiratory system. So it's not just the breathing and the lungs. It is influencing other organs in the body. Uh, and from my particular field, that we're quite concerned that there is some uh, impact on the brain as well. Neurologist Rob Wesseling and his team at Monash University have set up a registry of COVID-19 patients experiencing neurological problems. We're still learning a lot about this virus, but we are particularly worried that the virus, when it does affect the brain, whether it's potentially causing permanent neuron damage, nerve damage, and we know from other neurological diseases that nerve damage doesn't repair very well at all. Definitive information about permanent damage may be years away, but he hopes his work will help to improve treatment in the meantime. I'm really hoping that we can get a better idea of what those effects are from a, a neurological point of view, why they may happen, and whether there are ways to, to mitigate those effects. Uh, and that way we can try to help both clinicians and people who have the virus in terms of the best way to treat it, best way to manage it, and manage expectations of what might be happening afterwards. My name is Jason Chatfield, and I'm a cartoonist and a comedian working in New York City. That's the only language I really know is, is cartooning, so I wanted to share the information in as clear and um, easily digestible a way as possible. New York-based Australian cartoonist Jason Chatfield used his creative skills to convey his COVID-19 experience. He got the virus in late March and is still not fully recovered. There's definitely a really specific sort of neurological effect. I have to admit it is taking longer since COVID to come up with ideas and settle on them and arrive at them. Everything's a bit more difficult to do. Every thought is just a little bit cloudier. Every memory and trying to recall things is just, a, it's just that little bit off that you notice it. He worries that some of the symptoms will stay. I keep a very detailed diary of when I have symptoms and uh, brain fog and when I lose track of a thought. I'm concerned that there probably is a long-term effect um, on, uh, on the brain. This is a disease we haven't known for longer than eight months. No one's had it for longer than eight months. And the number of unknown unknowns is quite phenomenal. Brisbane-based intensive care specialist, Professor John Fraser, is leading a global consortium gathering data on COVID-19 patients. 53 countries and close to 400 hospitals are involved. Looking at the brain and neurological outcome, 
looking at the effect on kidneys, the effect on clotting, blood clotting, uh, the effect on long-term outcome, what will happen at one year, two years and beyond. He points out that even a small percentage suffering long-term damage is a lot of people. With 20 or 30 million people infected, even if 5% get long-term disability, that's devastating. You know, let's say 5% of people can't go back to work because of brain dysfunction or breathlessness. Again, that's a huge financial implication for the country. The expectations are unknown, really. This is new territory for everybody, including doctors. I'm lucky to be alive. Even if my progress stopped now, I'd be extremely happy, but that's not my intention. I plan to keep on working at this to see how healthy I can get. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.